Other, Trying to make me a little uncomfortable. It's <laughs> okay. working. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is Tyler. I'm here with Warshire, and we are at the Overland Expo. Now, I, I have asked him, what could you do to a trailer, or even what would you need in a trailer to make it a perfect, long duration Overland bug out vehicle? Yep. So, with that in mind, we're going to go through this thing, talk about what it has and show how you could take this, bug out, and never come back. Stick with me. Hey guys, it's Dad with Borshear. Uh, Tyler asked me to show you guys what we can do with this Borshear XOC from a sustainment standpoint. So you're, the world's ending, you're getting out, you're taking your trailer with you. What can you do to survive out of this thing for a very long duration? So right here in the back, we got some storage up here for cab in the cabinetry. You can store clothes, food, dry goods, canned goods, uh, lovely MREs that everybody loves to eat. Uh, that'll help you get your nutrients in for the first little while before you run out of your hard goods. So right below that, we got our kitchen area. Um, it runs on propane. The cool thing about this stove that we use is you can easily drop coals right into the bottom. So if propane isn't a sustainable item, but well, you can always find wood. So you can get some coals going, drop them in the bottom, and you can cook. You can heat up uh, meals or you can cook on it. So that kind of thing. Fuel. Yeah, it's not officially dual fuel, dual fuel, but in the event of emergency, you can make anything work. So, right here we got the sink. It just runs off 12 volt water pump. Uh, we'll get into the electrical system a little later. Uh, that would be a pretty easy one to sustain with solar. We'll talk about that more up front. Water is another easy one. So if, as long as you're near a water source, this is a 30 gallon water tank. Uh, they make all sorts of cool products that you can use for filtering water. You can also, you know, filter water yourself, boil it, treat it, and dump it in the tank. Um, you can get a Lifesaver jerry can, which has a filter built into it. So that'd be a great option if you're rolling through near a water source and you need to top off your water. You can use a Lifesaver jerry can and you can fill it up, dump it in the tank, fill it up, dump it in the tank, and just keep rolling from there. Um, since it's all 12 volt, as I said, it runs on the solar. The fridge right here, it's another 12 volt item. It's really good for keeping things cold. It's a dual zone, so you can do a fridge or freezer. And that comes into play really well when you run out of those dry goods we were talking about earlier. If you're starting to hunt and you need meat, you can keep it cold in there and not have to worry about it spoiling. So that helps create uh, more time for you to get to your next point, find that next survival item you need. So right here we got a 12 volt ice coat fridge. That's really nice for keeping meat cold. We were talking about dry goods earlier. When those dry goods run out, you're gonna want uh, some place to keep any meat or you know, uh, vegetables, fruits, that kind of thing that you've gathered or hunted for. Keep it cold so it doesn't spoil. The fridge is a really nice option for that. And the great thing is too, it runs off 12 volt, so solar is the way to keep it powered and keep it running for a long time. So right here on the driver's side, we got the hot water heater and the shower point. Uh, propane is one of those things in the event of emergency and long-term sustainment, it's not going to last. So hot water heater is going to be kind of a no-go unless you can come up with some kind of alternate source to heat water. The cool thing about this though is pump is 12 volt, so the shower is still going to work. You're still going to be able to shower. And in my opinion, cold shower is better than no shower. So right here, we got the cabin, which is hard shelter, which is one of the key elements of survival. It's got AC and propane heater. Again, propane is one of those things that's not going to last, but in the event of emergency, you could always outfit it with some type of cast heater or a stove burning, wood burning stove, and that'll help keep it warm. The AC is a bit of an issue in a sustainment scenario. Uh, it takes a lot of power, so AC is something you might have to roll out, but you do have a 12 volt fan up here, and that shouldn't be an issue with the solar. You can keep that thing running, keep some air flowing through, which will help keep temperature down. And then there's additional stores in here. You got lighting for, you know, seeing in the dark, trying to pack items, that kind of thing. Yeah, so this is a queen size bed. It's a 60 by 80, you got a lot of room in here. It's just a regular inner spring, but you can outfit it with any type of bed you'd want. Um, they stay pretty warm, the roof's insulated to help control heat and keep heat inside. So if you're in those winter months and you're trying to stay, stay alive in your survival trailer, this is a good option for it. So right up here, this is the front of the trailer. We just went through the cabin. Right here we got additional storage um, in a survivability, scenario, survivability and sustainment scenario. The more storage you have, the better off you're going to be. Um, you never know what you're going to need to take, what you're going to find, and those items that you do find, the items you do need to take, you got to keep them with you. We got Max Tracks up here. 
if you're setting up a survival trailer, I would definitely recommend getting a set of Max Tracks. They're great for recovery if you get stuck in mud, snow, sand. They're the easiest way to self-recover and not have to rely on additional sources for recovery. Right up here is the power station where we got it all running out of. There's two deep cycle marine grade batteries in here, uh, 2000 watt inverter. And then we also got auto transfer switch for managing shore power, battery control charger. And then this is that solar we've been talking about. So solar plugs in right here on the side of the box. And that's what's gonna allow you to keep that 12 volt pump going, keep that fridge going, keep the fan going in the event of a sustainment, sustainment scenario. All this stuff rides on top of our frame and the frame's the most important part of having a really suitable off-road survival trailer, a bug out trailer. Um, if you build a trailer on a subpar frame, you're gonna run into issues when you're having to carry all your gear with you, um, keep your food with you, and that's not something you wanna leave behind. If your frame goes down, if you have failure on your frame, you're leaving all that behind and that could be your life source. So it's really important to have that really solid base. So right up top we got the roof rack, that's really important for more sustainment or more shelter. We have equipped a rooftop tent on this one, so you can pop it open and you can sleep up to three people in there and make bigger ones for more people. In the event that you do not need a rooftop tent, uh, you can do Pelican cases up top for more storage. Uh, anything you find you might need, survival items, key, key items for survival, you can stow up on the top of the roof rack and have a nice secure place for them. Um, below that we got a ladder, just provides convenient access to the roof. Right here, we got our jerry can box. So this is what I was telling you about earlier. Uh, the Lifesaver jerry can right here. You can fill it up with water, it'll filter it out for you. And you can top off water tank to keep the sustainment going on the side of water. And you can put fuel in there as well? Yeah, you can also put fuel inside of a jerry can. So if you have items that require fuel, you can, just, you can carry fuel with you, top off generators, top off vehicles, that kind of thing. Perfect. So right here, we got our spare tire swing. And again, in the element of sustainment, survivability, uh, making it off grid to me this is a necessity because just like we were talking about the frame if something goes wrong with your frame you're leaving all this behind if something goes wrong with the tire you're leaving it all behind uh, so the spare tire swing offers a really good option for in the event of a flat you can swap it out and be moving again quick you're not there trying to figure out how to patch it up or how to reseat a tire that kind of thing so you got additional water storage here on the side um, you can do fuel or water with these roto packs that's just another element to sustainment and surviving the more you can carry with you, especially on a trail like this, where you're not bearing the load, the better off you are. Right on. I might have done this one. <laughs> Professional. So, I think that he pretty much answered all my questions. Most of the time, I'm really concerned. I'm like, well, what about this? What about that? He talked about how you could take swamp water, stick it in the jug, throw it in the, the container. Yep. Talked about plan B for you run out of propane. One thing that I would personally do if I had one of these, these guys can't say this, I know that they can't say this, I would throw a stove in it. Right? I would put a fire stove in there in the back just because it'll heat everything up, maybe even around here somewhere, I don't know. I would figure a way to stick a stove in it because you're not going to run out of wood. But you're inevitably going to run out of propane, but you won't run out of water if you go to the right location because you can clean it. You're not going to run out of sunlight, so this thing will run forever. Yeah. So this really would be a true answer to a ultimate survival bug out attachment to your already existing whatever. And I say that because how much does this weigh? 2,600 pounds dry. I guarantee, that's like a Prius can pull that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, not, okay, no one would suggest that, but the point is, if you got a four-wheel drive vehicle or an off-road capable vehicle at all, it can pull this thing, yep. right? Yeah. And given the clearance, the extra tires, it can pull it wherever you're gonna go. Yeah. So, this is an excellent answer. Right on. Thanks, man. Thank you. We'll talk to you guys soon. Appreciate it. See ya. Got it. No, I mean, do one more here. You got any questions? Leave it down below. Thanks for watching.